Despite President Salva Kiir's early assertion that Igad and AU's intervention in the Juba crisis was unwarranted, heads of state and government from eight countries met yesterday in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, to discuss the prevailing situation in Juba. And when they emerged from behind these locked doors, a deal had been brokered. South Sudan had accepted to have deployment forces for protection in its capital. To ensure lasting peace, the newly appointed Vice President Abandengai had an offer to relinquish his new position as VP should Machar return to Juba. The Executive Secretary of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD, Ambassador Mahbub Malim, said heads of state have directed the chiefs of staff to go to Juba and discuss the modalities of deploying a protection force with the government of South Sudan. If, if and when uh, uh, Dr. Machar uh, comes to uh, Juba, uh, and if the protection force is in, is in place at that time, uh, of course these are details that will be worked out, but I have no doubt that he's not going to feel insecure. Dr. Mashar, the acting representative to Kenya, Lam Chul Jok, told Citizen TV, they welcomed the IGAD Plus resolution, but he had some reservations. First of all, it was bombed by military gunships, and it was bombed by military tanks, so he had pulled back mm -hmm. behind Juba a little bit. And from the, day that, from the day that the announcement was made after now, Dr. Yak has been under constant attacks mm -hmm from the SPLA IG, which is the President Kiir's forces. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we sympathize with the people of... President Uhuru Kenyatta joined other regional leaders at the summit hosted by Ethiopian Prime Minister Hile Mariam de Salen. Dr. Mashar's troops, who had accompanied him to Juba, had all been killed in a gun battle near State House, the seat of power, after which the former vice president fled the capital over fears about his safety. Jackie Marie, Bay Citizen, Weekend.